modifying a very large Twin Victoria steam plant, splitting this very heavy steam plant into two halves to make it more manageable. This is part one, the boiler room. Generally, when you look at a full-size mill engine, the boiler is not in the same room as the engine. And it's always bothered me when I see it on a model. I assembled this boiler plant on the instructions of the customer. The customer also supplied the hardwood baseboard. And here it is on the day he picked it up, steaming in the garden. The steam plant that is, not the customer. It's a really great steam plant and I enjoyed putting it together. Unfortunately though the baseboard was made of some sort of oak and whenever it got wet it turned black. Not as black as this. I bought the steam plant back off the customer a couple of years later and the first thing I did was to remove all the components from the baseboard followed by spraying the baseboard black. This steam plant was so big it was getting in my way in the workshop so I brought it into the house along with a couple of others and in this clip I'm steaming the plant on the kitchen table. At the time I filmed this clip I'd removed all of the components from the baseboard. Just to give you an idea of how big this plant was, it was 80 centimetres long by 36 centimetres wide, that's 31 and a half inches by 14 inches, and it weighed a whopping 30 kilograms, 66 pounds, which is 4.7 stones and it was very heavy to carry around, even for me. Someone I know wants to buy this steam plant, but he said it's a bit on the heavy side, and that's just one of the reasons why I'm splitting the plant. Here's a shot of the original baseboard before I cut it in half. I should really say that I got a man across the road to cut it in half, as he's a professional joiner, his woodworking tools are far better than mine are. I took the components up into the workshop, and here we are on the workbench in there. The pump is now in full working order, I made a short series about fixing that, and I also fitted a much better water gauge to the boiler. Over a couple of days, I painted the base. This is satin black paint, and now the paint's dry, I can get on with the job. The smaller board is going to have the boiler, and the water pump, the condenser, and the small gas tank fitted to it. The larger baseboard will hold the engine, the water tank, and the hand pump. From thinking about this job to actually doing it took me a while. I don't normally procrastinate, but I didn't want to make a mistake. Part of me said I should put the condenser on the baseboard with the engine. Then the other part of me said, no, it needs to be part of the boiler room. And that's the way it's going to be. I'm having to make a slight adjustment. I'm moving the condenser back about a quarter of an inch. And at the moment, using my small rechargeable Proxon motor tool, I'm drilling some pilot holes for the screws. When working with hardwood, just about everything needs piloting. The length of the Twin Victoria engine, including its own baseboard, and the part of the flywheel that overhangs that, needed to be a bit longer to accommodate the engine. Because the condenser needs a pipe to go to the chimney, plus it also needs an exhaust pipe inlet from the pump, my original idea was to fit a blanking plug to one of the exhaust inlets on the condenser, and combine both of the exhausts from the engine into one pipe. I've included this clip as part of the description, but in the end I thought, no, I have a better idea. I'll make it so that the engine's exhaust connects to the condenser using silicone rubber tubing. And that's because if the exhaust piping from the cylinders was solid and the baseboard got knocked, it would damage the engine or the condenser. In this clip, I'm fitting the screws into the board before I fit the condenser. Even with pilot holes, it was too difficult a job using a screwdriver at this angle to get the screws to bite into the wood, but by pre-drilling them using the screws, it worked fine. With the condenser secured in place, in this clip I'm fitting the exhaust outlet from the pump. To the right of the inlet for the exhaust piping, you can see the main inlet from the steam engine's piping. All I need to do for the steam engine's exhaust at both sides on both of these fittings is fit a threaded piece of quarter inch pipe to the elbow and then fit a couple of short pieces of silicone rubber. The next part to be fitted to the baseboard is the boiler, held in place by four 2BA bolts. And here it is looking resplendent with its new three cock water gauge. The burner pipe is bent a little bit out of shape because I did steam the boiler so I could experiment with different sizes of jets 
in an attempt to stop it triggering my carbon monoxide alarm. The exhaust from the chimney smells quite fresh. It doesn't normally have the horrible smell which is normally generated by incomplete combustion of the gas. I will make the new owner aware of this. The best place to steam this plant is going to be outside anyway. And at least it's going to be more manageable when you come to carry the plant from where you keep it in the house to where you steam it in the garden. The outlet from the pump is connected to the check valve on the boiler and this part on the T-piece connects all the way from here to a valve on the top of the water tank on the other baseboard and this pipe will be fitted with a removable pressure union. This check valve on the back of the boiler accepts the output from the pump via a long copper pipe which will need fitting with a removable pressure union. Between the baseboard there will be five water and steam connections in total. Two of the connections will use silicone rubber tubing for the exhaust outlets from the engine to the exhaust inlets on the condenser. There will also be an easily removable long silicone rubber pipe from the water tower to the water inlet of the steam pump. Connecting the two halves should take about two minutes if that. The water bypass pipe from the pump to the water tower and the other water pipe from the hand pump to the check valve will need pressure unions, very easy to fit and remove. In the second part I will fit the engine, the water tower and the hand pump and silver solder the two pressure connectors on the two long water pipes. Then all it needs is a couple of pieces of silicone rubber tubing, followed by a steam test. That's it for part one, I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.